purpose for living with you I've made my decision You lift me up, fill my eyes with wonder For every young in your love This freedom's untainted With you, no moment is wasted Am I living it? Do I live in it? So astounding. Love is an ocean, you can drown me. The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste the sea. I'm under grace, the place to be. It means I'll never need an umbrella. I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather. Whether or never I ever understand I'm a man in the hands of great plans. I stand with faith there in a life I never known to touch. And still I saw my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. Yeah. What's going on kids? I have a special announcement for you. Young musical production called Purpose is around the corner and we would love for you to be there. Why? Because it's gonna bless your life. There'll be Mr. Panda, there'll be me singing, maybe there's Pharaoh, Moses, Aaron. What's going on? It's big. We all know it's gonna be big, all right? So Purpose is gonna be on the 2nd of October, 10 a.m. Saturday. Make sure you register. Get your parents, register today. The spots are limited, so we would love for you to be there and we don't want you to miss out. All the information will be down in the link below. Love you guys, enjoy the video. Welcome to Young, I'm Priscilla and I'm so excited to be here with you. Have you ever had someone tell you that you can't do something to make you stop doing it, even though you actually like doing it? There was a time that I really liked ballet and I really wanted to keep doing it, but someone told me to stop because I would never make it as a ballerina because apparently my moves were too much like a robot. I was so upset at them and told my mom. She then said to me, don't listen to them. They're just jealous of you and they don't want you to succeed. Do what makes you happy and don't stop trying to get better. I did as she said and I kept trying to get better. Stay tuned to see what happened next. But before that, let's look at the story of how Nehemiah went through a similar thing. So let's pray, let's close our eyes. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for everything. I just want to pray that we can all understand the lesson and the story and that we just get to have a great time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, 
from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Nehemiah, chapters 2, 4, and 6. When Nehemiah traveled to Jerusalem and surveyed the broken down walls, he saw immediately what had to be done. We must rebuild! God moved the hearts of the people to join him. Let's get started! But while the Jewish people were eager to repair the tumbled down walls and ruined gates, the people in the lands around them were not so thrilled. Uh, What do they think they're doing? A city with no walls stood open to attack. The people inside could never become a strong nation. The enemies of the Jews knew that if the wall of Jerusalem was rebuilt, the Jewish people might become a powerful enemy. They must cease and desist. Sanballat, a Horonite, and Tobiah, an official from Ammon, marched right up to the place where the people gathered to begin work. Pathetic. What a ragtag group. Why bother to even start? You shall never finish. Plus, the king is gone. I think you're trying to take over. Nehemiah kept his cool. The God of heaven will give us success. We serve him. So we'll start rebuilding the walls. Mm -hmm. Good luck with that. Nehemiah and the Israelites didn't need luck. They needed God's help. It was true that a few of the Jewish people were builders. Let's see. We've got priests, nobles, goldsmiths, perfume makers, farmers, grape growers, shepherds, any stonemasons. Well, let's get organized. Where he could, Nehemiah assigned each family group to work on a section of the wall closest to their home. Eliashib, you and the other priests will rebuild the sheep gate. Then work on the wall up to the Tower of the Hundred. On it. Hassanah's family, I want you to work on the fish gate, lay its beams and repair the doors with metal bolts and bars. We've got this. Nehemiah continued to give each family or group a part of the wall to rebuild. Old and young, men and women, they put everything they had to gather the fallen stones and hewing beams. In a short time, the wall began to rise again. Inconceivable! Sanballat and Tobiah were shocked to see the Jews actually making progress. They would mock the work to anyone who would listen. Do those Jews think they can make the wall new in a single day? Preposterous! The stones are all scattered and piled up like garbage. I suppose an itty bitty fox tried to climb up on that excuse for a wall. <laughs> ah! <laughs> the whole thing would fall down. <laughs> Once again, Nehemiah ignored the heckling. Instead, he prayed as he worked. God, please listen to our prayer. Some people hate us. They're saying bad things about us. Don't hide your eyes from their guilt. With a burst of energy, the people worked even harder until the wall was half as high as it needed to be. Preposterous! Time for some action! Tobiah and Sanballat began to plot with the surrounding nations to attack Jerusalem before the wall could be finished. We must set guards, day and night. Even with guards in place, enemies threatened. The Jews were exhausted. There's rubble everywhere, and our enemies say that no matter where we are, they'll attack. Nehemiah refused to be distracted. He stationed families at the weakest parts of the walls, armed with swords, spears, and bows. Don't be afraid. Fight for your families. From that day, everyone carried their weapons, even as they worked. If you hear the sound of the trumpet, run to join us. God will fight for us. Nehemiah and the Jews worked from the very first light of sunrise until the stars came out at night. At last, the wall itself was finished. It's full height. All the gaps are filled. But we can't rest yet. The entrance gate still must be repaired. Sanballat was furious, but he had another play to make. So he sent a message to Nehemiah, who was working high on the wall. Sanballat says, come. Let's talk with one another. Let's meet in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. Oh no, I don't think so. Nehemiah knew perfectly well they were planning to harm him, but he stayed focused on the work and sent his own messenger to Sanballat. 
Nehemiah says, I am working on a huge project. Why should the work stop while I leave it? Why should I go down and talk with you? Inconceivable! Try again. Five times, Sanballat sent messages. He even threatened to tell the Persian king that Nehemiah was trying to make himself king. Tell Sanballat you're just making that up. Oh, I'll have to send another message. Guy, time for our new strategy. Sanballat made one last desperate attempt. He hired a man named Shemaiah to make Nehemiah look bad with his own people. Nehemiah, some men are coming at night to kill you. Let's go hide in the temple and lock the doors. Nehemiah knew that God had not sent Shemaiah. Should a man like me run away? No, I won't go. Once again, Nehemiah saw through the tricks of his enemies. Instead of hiding away and looking foolish, he trusted God and doubled down on the work. On the 52nd day of work, the wall and gates were finished. No! The wall had been finished in record time by a group of ordinary everyday people. It was clear to everyone that God had helped Nehemiah and the Jews stay focused and finish strong. You see, Nehemiah did not listen to what they were saying. He did not give in to Samala and kept working. Even when he was mocked and threatened, he kept his focus and prayed to God as he was working. In the end, they finished the wall in record time. It only took them 52 days to finish a full height wall. The enemies were of course devastated and annoyed at Nehemiah. Well, so back to my story. I kept my focus in trying to get better and I was good enough to participate in a competition. I ended up winning first place and that person who told me that I couldn't do it, didn't end up winning. So moral of the story is to focus on what you want to achieve regardless of what other people say. In God, everything is possible. So kids, today's key passage is from Nehemiah 2.28. It says, I replied, the God of heaven will help us succeed. We, his servants, will start rebuilding this wall. Let's repeat it one more time together and loudly. I replied, the God of heaven will help us succeed. We, his servants, will start rebuilding this wall. Great job, kids! It's quiz time! Get ready, kids! For today, it is multiple choice questions. So, question number one is, who took charge in rebuilding the wall? A. David B. Sambala or C. Nehemiah That's right kids, it's C. Nehemiah So let's move on to question number two How many times did Sambala send Nehemiah messages? Is it A. Three times B. Five times or C. Seven times That's right, it's B. Five times Question number three, how many days did it take the Jews to rebuild the wall? A, 52 days, B, 30 days, or C, 100 days? That's right, it was A, 52 days. Great job, kids. Well, that's it for today, kids. Thank you for spending your Sunday with us. Remember, we have our weekly contents from Mondays to Fridays. We'll see you in our Zoom classes later this afternoon. But before we go, let's pray. Let's close our eyes. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for today's sermon. Thank you for today's story. I just pray that we all get to have a great week ahead of us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Bye, kids.